I was a head teacher of a large secondary school for boys in Bournemouth from 1999 to 2011 and I've been a proud member of the Labour Party since 2015. I have to say when I went to Bournemouth I thought I'd cracked it, leafy avenues and so on, but Bournemouth is characterised by pockets of deprivation and many of the families in my school lived low-waged, precarious lives. There were many single parent families, families with issues of addiction, students had little faith in either themselves nor what the world could offer them. Yet we made a difference. We improved our attainment and attendance and we changed the culture. Our free school mill students made better progress. We addressed issues of self-esteem and bullying through peer mediators. And we used sports as a means of enhancing self-esteem and raising aspirations. But it took an awful lot of effort and heartbreak. And often the way forward was through incremental steps. A breakfast club with table tennis increased attainment and attendance. A bacon roll was a better start for the day for our boys than a can of Red Bull and a couple of cigarettes. We had to wrestle with Ofsted. We had to learn to play games with data and being judged with no reference to our own particular issues and challenges. And it meant having the funding to do things and to improve things and to attract and retain good staff. I left my school in 2011 after my successful treatment by keyhole surgery for bowel cancer at the world famous oncology centre in Bournemouth, in Paul rather, which would be split in two as a result of Dor Dorset Commissioning Group's proposals, but, but that's another story. The school then became an academy and since then its fortunes have not fared well, but funding was at the basis of everything. An analysis shows that of the 150 state schools in Dorset, 103 have faced funding cuts in recent years. The shortfall for 2020 will be 4.4 million, and this equates to the difference between funding and the amount needed to protect per pupil funding in real terms. The per pupil loss in Dorset equates to, 1990, equates to equates 94 pounds. And this is the amount that will be lost to every people in Dorset as a result of the reduced budget. Dorset has 43,948 pupils, according to the local the government school census. In South Dorset, our constituency, 23 out of 28 state schools have suffered cuts to their funding. The shortfall in 2020 will be 1.5 million. The pupil loss is 166 pounds. The School Cuts website notes that Carolyn has pledged to vote against school cuts. Richard Drax, it's reported, has yet to respond. Mm -hmm. Nationally, 1% of parliamentary <laughs> candidates right of the Conservative yeah. Party have yeah. yet to make, have actually made a pledge. May I give two examples of cuts? Swanish Primary, where we've lured Drax to, to meet the head next Thursday, which will be an interesting meeting, mm -hmm. has suffered a £6,000 shortfall in 2020, equating to a loss per pupil of £33. But White Regis Infant School and Nursery will suffer a, almost a £60,000 shortfall in 2020, account, uh, uh, equating to a pupil loss of £224. And these cuts have a tremendous cumulative effect. Support staff made redundant, enrichment activities curtailed, range of provision reduced. And many schools in Dorset and in Weymouth and Portland and Swanage serve deprived communities or have students from low income families. And many students require that additional support to make the most of their talents. Good schools are at the heart of their community. They transform lives and widen horizons. And South Dorset, our constituency, has the lowest level of social mobility in England. Yeah. It ranks yeah. bottom amongst 533 parliamentary constituencies. <laughs> Workers in Weymouth earn the lowest weekly wage in England. 25% of all jobs in Purbeck are paid below the living wage. 40% of some children living in some parts of Portland live in poverty. Today, Dorset sends 10% fewer students to higher education than the average of the UK. So I welcome the manifesto. It's truly a transformative document for a troubled, divided country with a crumbling public realm. And the preface to the detail about education affirms the value of a good, well-funded national education service in terms of making the economy stronger, society richer, and people more fulfilled. It aims to reverse the, link, the, the ills of government conservative education policy, the cutting of budgets, disproportionate adverse consequences in deprived areas, the close of Shore Start centres, was it 6,000 since 2010? The underfunding of support for those who are most vulnerable. The National Education Service will provide free education for everyone throughout their lives and will nurture every child and adult to find that path 
which reflects and highlights their particular talents and abilities, be they creative, be they vocational, or be they technical. So, in sum, what will happen? Tuition fees will be scrapped. Schools will be properly resourced with increased long-term funding. A fairer funding formula will leave no child worse off than others elsewhere. Schools which have fallen into disrepair will be upgraded. The funding settlement will ensure pupils are taught by a qualified teacher. Every pupil will be open for a full five days per week. The maximum class size for all primary school pupils will be 30. More contact time will be funded for the teacher to prepare and plan. Free schools and academies will be brought back under the control of local authorities and communities. Ofsted will be abolished, and I've had bitter experience of Ofsted, yeah, yeah. sweeping away a system which has created an arid, mechanistic regime which has stifled innovation and narrowed horizons. Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 SATs and baseline assessments will be scrapped. We have the most, te most tested kids in the world, in, in, in the Western world. In yeah, Finland, yeah. no tests. Teachers are well paid and trusted, left to get on with the job. Assessment in future will be refocused purely upon supporting progress. An arts premium and arts and culture are so important. No mention of arts at all whatsoever in the Dorset plan, which means that the Arts Council will not fund any artistic yeah. endeavours in Dorset because they will only do so if the county actually makes some provision for them. So there will be no seed funding whatsoever from the Arts Council for Dorset. So I'll leave that with you too. But the manifesto talks of an arts premium for every primary school child. All two, three and four year olds <coughs> will get 30 years of free nursery care a week. Paid maternity leave will be extended to 12 months. Cuts to Shore Start services, Shore Start centres will be reversed. And I rem remember seeing Angela Rayner for the first time at a meeting in the BIC for the Communication Workers Union, talking about her own life experiences and how Shore Start centres really started her on her journey. Um, we're going to have a new service, Shore Start Plus enough centres to provide a generally universal service available in all communities focused under under twos. 150,000 early years staff recruited, including special educational needs coordinators, <coughs> and I know from experience how important and essential and undervalued and underpaid teaching assistants have been. A new national pay scale will drive up the, work, the, the, the wages for that mainly female workforce. Up to six years of adult learning and training will be three. Tax, holes, tax loopholes enjoyed by public schools will be closed. I don't want to get started on that. I remember my head of PE going to Camford School and saying, this school is a palace. And it's no mistake, surely, that they call it the 7% problem. 7% of people in England went to public schools, and yet they have a stranglehold upon Parliament, upon the legislature, upon the executive. It's, it's appalling. We get rid of that. Get rid of those tax loopholes. I look forward for the time when there's no such thing as public schools, but Absolutely. the Justice Commission will be asked to consult on how to integrate them within the state system. Base rate of pupil funding post-16 education will be aligned to that of Key Stage 4. Um, in my work for school cuts, secondary schools I've avoided and haven't really looked at the effect of those cuts upon post-16 education. They're significant. So there will be dedicated capital funding to expand provision post-16 and bring back the Education Maintenance Alliance, yeah, yeah. as the Welsh Government, mm -hmm. Labour Government, has already yeah. done so. Mm -hmm. Marketisation of higher education will be reversed. Uh, universities are run like businesses, aren't they? New funding formula for higher education will ensure all higher education institutions have adequate funding for teaching, research and access is widened to higher education. Reversal of part-time learning is halted and casualisation of staff is halted. The manifesto for education and throughout is a bold and transformative prospectus. And I commend it to the House. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.